As Marcus indicated, we were invited to speak about the role of the contemporary art museum in society. I wanted to begin with a quote from some UK colleagues, cultural leadership experts, Sue Hoyle and Jamie Beddow, who observed that if the arts seek public subsidy, then they should reflect and engage their publics, serving their communities as civic anchors. This resonates for me because it echoes the journey that this institution, the Whitworth, has been on for the past 10 years. This has been about transforming an important institution with an international collection, part of a university, which was nevertheless a quite inward-facing, disconnected institution, into a place which is admired for the quality of its exhibitions, its public programmes, and most especially, its ability to connect to audiences that would not normally visit galleries or museums. So, this institution has looked like this since 1889. It's very clearly a high cultural institution. The building encodes a certain kind of power and hierarchy of the arts. So, it invites you in, it has a front door, but it only really invites in those people who already know how to enter the art institution. And if you look at the back of the institution, it said a very loud go away to its local audiences, the people who used the park that was also created at the same time as the gallery. So when I arrived at the Whitworth, there were roughly 80,000 visitors a year. We developed the program and connected to our audiences to a point where we were welcoming 180,000 visitors. But a physical transformation of this building and a change of culture and behaviour has resulted in this now being our front door to the park and also 350,000 visitors since we opened in February and winning the accolade as uh, the UK's Museum of the Year. So we have utterly transformed the institution into one which seeks to speak of the artwork that stands above our door. By Scottish artist Nathan Coley, it says, Gathering of Strangers. That is our spirit of place. We seek to bring people together who don't know each other for a social engagement with art. So we sit within a park and we are connected to it. We seek to make people comfortable. So these changes have not only come about because of the physical transformation of the building, but also because of a fundamental shift in the culture and behaviours of our organisation. There were two principles which were actually set out in part in the original mission statement for the gallery, which underpinned a brief for organisational change, which was also a brief for our architects. The first was that the Whitworth, as a university art gallery, should be a creative laboratory, a social learning space where we regard every person that comes in, whatever age they are or whatever social background, as a researcher. So whether they are a Harvard scholar or a baby, they are a researcher of our collections. The second was driven by a statement written in the 1930s by the artist and art historian Margaret Pilkington, who was director of the gallery then. She said, a good museum is a place where people feel comfortable. And if it stands in a gallery or in a garden or a park, one should be able to contemplate the beauty of the outdoors as a counterpoint to the beauty within. What she was describing 
wishing for is a permeable art institution. So we want to allow people to learn and play with us. We offer welcome and a conversational space to break down the barriers between people and the art collections that we hold. So, what has this meant in practice? I thought I would give you a very swift run through the first 48 hours of the new Whitworth's life as a way of explaining this. So, to begin with, we were very busy. We just had to brace ourselves against the crowds who wanted to join us to mark the reopening of this institution. But what we offered over the first two days was a description of a more culturally democratic institution. So we showed contemporary art. This is by Cornelia Parker, being enjoyed by many ages of people. We also showed international artists. This is Unmanned Nature by Chinese, now American-based artist, Sai Guo Chiang. We showed Thomas Schutter and Sarah Lucas. Also, the historic collection, which was the founding gift to the Whitworth, Watercolours by artists like Turner. But we also showed a new gift by an art patron who was born in Manchester and who wanted to give back contemporary art to the city. We showed wallpaper and textiles as well, but that was not all. We tried to give over the institution to the audiences we were seeking. So we did conventional lectures. This is me doing an artist talk with Cornelia Parker. But we gave the same space to our family audience for them to create art in partnership with artists and musicians. We gave the spaces to our young people these are our circuit young curators, we, a programme we've developed with Plus Tate. They programmed Manchester grime artists and created that's a kind of music that is very noisy, which I personally don't like very much. Um, they created a visual environment to encounter that music in new ways. But we also gave the space to an orchestra Manchester Camerata, who produced a new piece of music responding to our collections. Most especially, we made a public statement about our university status. This man is Kostya Novoselov, the Nobel Prize winner for the co-discovery of graphene, the world's thinnest and strongest substance. Beijing and Manchester are in a race to make patents for the new uses for graphene. But here, there's the first cultural use of this new substance. Kostya, with Cornelia Parker and our help, took flakes of graphite from the edge of a Blake drawing in our collection and made graphene, which gave a trigger, which sent an electrical impulse when Kostya, the scientist, breathed on it, to create a meteorite shower over the park, ground up meteorites in fireworks, which was seen by three and a half thousand people all across Manchester. We projected the Blake drawings onto the side of the building, and the Halle Orchestra's young choir sang Blake songs. Grown men cried. It was about creating a feeling of love. And this are, these are our young marketeers who send a message out about the organisation across Manchester. And this was the message that we got back from a very young visitor. It says, the Whitworth is a place where people learn how to be wonderful. For me, that was the most profound piece of evaluation of 10 years of work. It has been about going out to other people's places. So this very old man helped curate an exhibition with us 
after one of my staff lived in his older people's care home for a year to find out why old men didn't visit us. The next exhibition in our collection centre is being curated by babies, toddlers and their carers to show their response to the collection. Our young people bring other young people in because they lead the work that is being presented. And our schools take over the inside and outside of the building as they shape creative learning for their own future. All of this matters because those issues, how young people learn, how older people can, how we can prevent social isolation of older people, how we engage poorer families in cultural activities, these are the big challenges for the whole city, really for the whole of the UK. So we make the gallery relevant to our funders. But there is no contradiction between doing that work and presenting international art, like the wonderful Uli Sig collection, which will finally have its home at M Plus in Hong Kong. Because it is the art that engages the people. And when we can bring together different kinds of people with the diversity of art that we present, we really deliver on our aspiration to be a gallery in the park, a, pe a place where people, different kinds of people in Manchester, feel comfortable. Thank you.